international conference on recent advances in artificial intelligence and data science, organized by Dr. Peter Rao Vijayamardi Foundations, Institute of Business Management and Digital Development, IP Mardi, Riyadhar, Bangladesh. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates has rightly quoted that the power of artificial intelligence is so incredible, it will change society in some very deep ways. Also, we know that data science is a broad field that touches on virtually every business domain, from manufacturing to medicine, from finance to publishing. Data science enables companies to efficiently understand kinetic data from multiple sources and device valuable insights to make smarter data driven decisions. Hence, we at IBM ID have chosen this topic of this international conference as recent trends in both artificial intelligence and data science. This topic is actually the current trend in today's IT industry. At many places, AI and D is identified as two sides of the coin. The theme of international conference, recent advances in artificial intelligence and data science relates with virtual, digital, and statistical power of today's IT industry. Different insights from these domains close the landmine on different aspects of actual use and working of artificial intelligence and data science, normally quoted as AI and DS. Hence, in this, we are trying to touch every such area of AI and DS with the help of our renowned dignitaries, including the international experts joining us online in this inaugural event. It is our great privilege to have with us Chief Case for today's International Conference, Mr. Sunil Kedar, Managing Director, Kedar Motopao Private Limited, Aurangabad. The subject matter experts and international guests of the International Conference are Mr. Alessandro, Program Manager, Eagle Services, Netherlands, Mr. Ian, Senior Manager, Healthcare Solution, Division X, BT Enterprise, United Kingdom. They are going to join us shortly online. I am welcoming everyone present over here. A warm welcome to you all. With this small note, I have moved to the start of the session where we, go, where we are going to lighting of the land and land is a sign of prosperity. Light is a symbol of brightness and prosperity as sunlight expands, the darkness of my similarly blessing bring in our life prosperity and happiness. To make this event, Blessed one, we invoke Goddess Saraswati by kindling the lamp of knowledge and wisdom. I request all the respected dignitaries on the dais to kindly come forward for lighting of the lamp. Thank you, everyone. As we are having our international guest joining us online from Netherlands and UK, uh, and there is a time slot difference from India and other countries, we have given them a fixed time. So they are going to join us shortly within five minutes. So now I am giving this session over to Dr. Pardesi sir to coordinate with the guest. Now the international guest will join us. Good morning to one and all present over here. I, Dr. Pardeshi, 
introduce you a brief about our first international expert on this session. Mr. Alexandro is going to deliver a speech on artificial intelligence and data sciences. I'll have a short introduction of him. He is a lead strategist for data science and analyst for EFEA, eClerk Services, Netherlands. Mr. Alexandro has more than 15 years of work experience in strategy and advanced analytics and has spent with top management consulting firms like Deloitte, Accenture, tech specialists like SaaS and Unisys, media agencies, and in internal consulting roles. Throughout his career, Mr. Alexandro has worked with a multitude of industries leading new value propositions, data science, product and service innovation. And I would request Dr. Sanodhi sir to kindly join the expert. I request Mr. Alexandro to kindly proceed, sir. Thank you. Due to some time difference, our guest is joining us within five minutes. I would like to request Honorable Director Dr. Sanjay Dhammati sir to kindly brief about this international conference. Thank you, sir. Now, very good morning to one and all present here and uh, participants abroad. Respected Dias, Mr. Sunil Gildan, Dr. Dykeward, Secretary General, Vicky Patel Foundation. Dr. Duke, Deputy Director, Sikhi Patel Foundation. Mr. Jibre, Marine Director of uh, Zebra Power Systems. All principals of different institutes under Vicky Patel Foundation, faculty members, faculty from different uh, institutes in Maharashtra, students who have come from different uh, colleges of. Uh, from Nasi, Kupurga, Sri Rampur, and Ahmedabad, who are sitting in the other hall. Researchers will be presenting the papers today, faculty members, and fellow friends. Warm welcome to this international conference, recent advances in artificial intelligence and data 
data sources. At the outset, I thank our regional leader, Honorable Nanda Sridhara Krishnishwiti Patil, Cabinet Minister Revenue, Dairy Development and Animal Advocate, and our young dynamic uh, leader and our source of inspiration for the Patil Foundation staff members, Honorable Sridhara Vikhe Patil, Member of Parliament, Ahmed Nagar, giving us this opportunity of organizing this international conference. I also thank Dr. PM Gaikwad, Secretary General, Vikhe Patil Foundation, and Dr. Abhijit Jute, Deputy Director, Vikhe Patil Foundation, for motivating Team IBMRD to organize this conference. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. The process started way back in June 22 after, and after several deliberations. The conference title was coined as Recent Advances in Artificial Intelligence and Data Science. The thought process started with the placement activities of our MCA students, because the MCA uh, computer science is a boom at the expected uh, a lot of good placements, uh, which happened uh, in the Tepati Foundation campus here. A good number of our MCA students are placed in as interns, trainees in data, as data scientists in different companies in and around Pune, Hyderabad, and Bangalore. The basic objective of the title was to make the topic simple and easy to understand for the MBA and MCA students. Lots has talked about artificial intelligence and data science, but it is very difficult to spell out the practical applications of artificial intelligence and data science. Here in the conference, we have made an attempt to arrange the plenary and panel sessions wherein we discuss the recent advances in artificial intelligence and data science the applica with the applications so that it will be very easy for MCA students and uh, not many uh, BCA and BCA students who are participating here in this two-day event uh, will uh, help will be helpful to them to understand this concept. This will help not only our MCA students, but also the MBA students to understand the topic in detail. Today and tomorrow. We not only have PG students attending the conference, but also students from rural parts of Nasik, Satana, Kupurga, Baramati, and Shadramsur. Now a brief, brief about the participation. We have received 150 papers for the conference, of which we have accepted 104 papers after the peer review and packaging check. Of which record number of 70 papers have come from international research scholars who have been participating in uh, AI, who have been practicing AI in years for a long time. The international research students' participation participating in this conference will present the papers in online mode tomorrow after 11 a.m. There are around 104 papers total, of which around 72 papers are from Maharashtra, remaining from are from outside Maharashtra. We have motivated the student participants as, as well to write the research papers. Students will also be presenting the papers today and tomorrow. A big number of students have uh, participated and uh, we are very happy with the number of students who will present the papers today and tomorrow. So the team I came already under the guidance of Honorable Sri Rana Krishnaji Vikhe Patil, Cabinet Minister, and Honorable Sri Sujay Vikhe Patil Ji, Dr. P.M. Kaipat Sir, and Dr. Abhijit Vikhe Sir, could handle this challenge of organizing this international conference. Inviting international speakers, but the most important challenge was to invite the chief guest. After talking to different experts, SPP officials, industry experts, we could reach, reach to our today's chief guest, Mr. Sumit Srinivar, managing director of Kirdak Autocom Private Limited, Aurangabad. Mr. Sunil Kirdak does not come from any business family or does not have any legacy which is carrying forward. But his desire, ambition, commitment, dedication has made him what he is today. Mr. Sunil Kirdak, a true entrepreneur, a very down to earth personality, and a fire in the belly to reach out to the new ideas and inventing and inventions and adapt to the new art requirements technology, he is the apt chief guest, which we thought. After inviting Mr. Kirdak and accepting our invitation, we had a sense of satisfaction that we have an apt guest for our international conference a technocrat and an entrepreneur who started his journey from the ranks. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation. I'm sure our students will be delighted to hear you. I'm also thankful to Mr. Jivde, again, who is a big industrialist in Aurangabad. Mr. Jivde, of course, I would like to mention, has been very helpful to IBM and because he has uh, himself carried out uh, two placement campaigns uh, in IBM and has placed number of students of uh, IBM and and uh, he has a big plan of uh, uh, 
carrying out uh, a placement campaign for uh, our engineering students so with the permission of principal engineering college uh, if we can take it forward uh, we will definitely do it sir to make the canvas broader we invited mr ian shannon senior manager healthcare solution division x bt enterprises uk and mr alessandro maxirello program manager and lead strategist for data science and analytics emea elax eplex services netherlands the talk will give a overview of recent advances in europe i am thankful to both of them for accepting our invitation the both have accepted our invitation to visit the campus when they are in india next we are also thankful to dr sudhi bhattacharya and iit kanpur alumni who is now settled in uk and is a scientist at isro for accepting our invitation as the chief guest for the bilateral session he will address the bilateral online tomorrow i am thankful to all the research scholars who have participated in the conference and will be presenting the papers all the very best to all the participants i am thankful to all the experts who agreed to be the experts in various activities like plenary and panel discussion thank you thank you everyone I am obliged by the presence of all the heads of the institute and the Kitty Patel Foundation. Thank you, one and all. It was a wonderful experience working with my team to organize this conference. Team IBMRD, let's keep the spirit on for the next two days and uh, look forward to organizing many such international events. Thank you, thank you very much. With this small brief of the conference, I now look forward to the participation of all the uh, participants. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we have some time difference issues. Our international uh, experts are going to join us shortly. We will proceed our session. Uh, now, uh, I would like to request Dr. Rajendra Singh Pardesi, sir, to come forward for the introduction of our chief guest. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very fortunate. That today we have got a chief guest, Mr. Suni Ramhau Kirde. Thank you very much, sir, for coming all the way from your busy schedule. Sir is an example of how one can be a global with local. That mantra as sir has given. I know sir's journey, how he has came from the rural part of the Maharashtra and how he has developed himself. In the journey of robotics and automation, sir is a first-generation entrepreneur, visionary leader of Kirda Group with a mission to ideate, innovate, and design most practical solutions for the industry. Along with promoter for the growth of MSMEs, sir is a green initiator and a forester at heart. Sir. From 2004, he is a managing director of Kirda Group. He has established Tooltech to link in 2004. Sir has established Kirda Autocom Private Limited in 2008. Sir has established Purging Division in 2015. Sir has established Unicraft Appliances in 2020. Sir's clientele list is very vast. Right from Bajaj Auto Limited, Tata Steel, Skoda Auto, Volkswagen, Siemens, Varoc, and so on. So, sir's jo journey jo hai, kinke itne logon ke saath sir kam karte hai. Sir ka formal education Jawaharlal Nehru Engineering College, Aurangabad se hua hai, mechanical engineering mein. Sir has done masters in business administration in finance as a specialization. Sir has received national award for research and development by MSME, Government of India, year 2008. Sir has received Rajiv Gandhi Shiromini Award for outstanding individual achievement and distinguished service to nation in 2011. Sir has also received national award for entrepreneurship by MSME, Government of India in 2008. Sir has received Udyog Patra Award for Import Substitute Product in 2010 by Institute of Trade and Industry. Sir is also happy participant in social activities like Maratwara Association of Small Scale Industries and Agriculture. 
Sir has honored to represent MNCCI in year 2017-18 as a president. Sir is a member of many industrial organizations. Sir is a convener of Advantage Maharashtra Expo 2020, one of the largest organized by the NSA organization. So, ladies and gentlemen, please give. I would request Honorable Secretary General today's chief guest, Dr. Sunil Kildas. Thank you so much, sir. Today we have with us Chairman for today's conference, Honorable Dr. P. M. Gaidwar, sir, Secretary General, Director Technical, Dr. Victor Ravike Patil Foundation. I would like to introduce a great motivator of IPMRD, Honorable Dr. Sir is Secretary General, Director Technical at Dr. Victor Ravike Patil Foundation. He is Professor and Head of Department of Pharmacology at Dr. Vithala Vikhepati Foundation's College of Pharmacy. Sir is doctorate in pharmacy and having vast experience of teaching. Sir is also member of Board of Study, Pharmacology at the Savitribai Pune Pune University Pune and having membership of many reputed organizations. With this, now I request Director Sir to kindly felicitate Honorable Dr. P. M. Daikwad Sir, Secretary General, Director Technical, Dr. Vithala Vikhepati Foundation. Thank you, sir. Now I'd like to request uh, introduce our biggest supporter of IBMRD, the dynamic and vibrant personality of Dr. Vitara Vikhepati Foundation, Dr. Abhijit Devdesan, Deputy Director, Medical College and Hospital. Sir is truly a role model for our students and faculty. Sir is presently working as Professor and Head of Department of Physiotherapy and Cardiovascular and Respiratory Services. Sir is having vast experience in various domains of physiotherapy, education, and has an association with many reputed universities in India as a member of Board of Studies. Sir is a Vice Chancellor nominee for Staff Selection Committee by Maharashtra University of Health Sciences last year. He is a recipient of significant contribution award in physiotherapy from the Indian Association of Physiotherapists. He has recently been awarded a doctorate degree and is now a recognized PhD student at the State Health. With this, now I request Honorable Director Sir to kindly felicitate Deputy Director, Medical College and Hospital, Dr. Victor Rao Vikhepati Foundation, Honorable Dr. Abhijit Dilthi Sir. Yes, so it is time again to hear from our international expert. Our first expert, Mr. Alexandro from Netherlands, has joined us. And now we will start his subject expert session here. So, everyone, uh, please be ready for the session which is online here with us. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, could you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you. Fantastic, fantastic. So I'm going to share my screen. Apologies, there was some uh, technical hiccup. Uh, gonna give me one second. I'm about to share my screen. There you go. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yeah, we can see your screen, Alessandro. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll thank you just very much. Offshore. We'll confirm with the offshore if you don't mind. No Alessandro, problem. Because, yeah. Absolutely. Hi, Alessandro, you can start now. Everybody can see you. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, thanks everyone for, for having me today. Um, we're gonna spend the next uh, about uh, 30 minutes, uh, probably a few, a bit, few minutes more um, to go through this presentation. Uh, I will leave some time at the end uh, for some questions and answers, uh, if there is any question. Um, obviously, feel free to interrupt me or, uh, again, perhaps to um, collect questions and, um, you know, if you think it's better to basically collect the questions all for the end. So without further ado, I'm going to crack on with the presentation. Um, so again, today we're going to be looking at uh, um, uh, some of the work that have been involved recently and uh, also in the recent past. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, um, data science, uh, and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, 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 particularly uh, the movement from digital transformation to virtual transformation. I will explain in a second what that means. Particularly, I think we are all familiar with what digital transformation is. I will explain what virtual transformation is. What do we mean with that? Uh, and I will be focusing specifically on data science today and what data science means and what data science is probably going to mean in the next uh, uh, six months, uh, 12 months, uh, uh, one year, et cetera, et cetera. Um, cool. Um, so again, let me go through uh, very quickly what we're gonna be covering. So I'm gonna go through a very brief introduction of myself. So I'll give you a bit more flavor of who you're talking to, what is my uh, experience and expertise. Uh, we're going to look at uh, um, generic, uh, in fact, we're going to look at historically and uh, um, going all the way to a uh, future looking outlook uh, from a tech innovation curve uh, where we're going to be discussing particularly the role of, in, of communication in, the, in our uh, past, recent and perhaps future history. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, applications of data science across industries and particularly what data science means. Uh, 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 to uh, practitioners today, uh, practitioners like myself, and again, you'll see uh, also throughout my expertise and my experience, as I said, uh, um, you know, what has been my exposure uh, from a data science perspective. I'm going to discuss, uh, again, I'm going to focus a bit more on what is data science going to become tomorrow, and uh, uh, I'm going to provide some uh, real-life practical example coming straight from, uh, 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 from the industries. Uh, from uh, both consultancies and agencies in fact. Um, again, as I said, we're gonna have some time for questions and answers at the end. Okay, uh, so let me just briefly introduce myself. Um, again, three quick points. Uh, I'm sure you already have some uh, synapses on uh, uh, my, uh, my profile, uh, but from an academic standpoint, uh, uh, I have uh, a bachelor in uh, pure statistics uh, from the University of Milan. Uh, and uh, then I have completed my MBA in uh, uh, an American business school, called International Business School, top 30 business school. Um, I completed that in the United States. It was quite likely a great experience. Again, so I'm sure that there will be lots of similar students in the class uh, today. Uh, they're listening to this. So hopefully um, this resonates with you guys. Um, but again, besides from academic uh, background, I start working uh, during university, thanks to my uh, degree in statistics, which is probably not very common in my country in Italy, uh, not back in time when I did that, it was right before 
data science was even a thing. Uh, but from a professional experience, I probably split myself fairly equally between uh, uh, management consulting, uh, where I work for the likes of Accenture and Deloitte, for example, uh, um, advertising agencies, uh, for example, part of WPP, where I've been a director for, uh, for agencies. Uh, but also I've uh, led and run innovation for directly for firms, like for example, News UK, uh, News Corporations, uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you will be familiar with, uh, with the company, the Sunday Times, the Sunday Times, obviously, I have been living for a long time, probably as you can get from my accent in the United, King, United Kingdom, specifically in London. Uh, again, uh, at the same time, uh, I, uh, I worked uh, uh, in depth, you know, in, you know, in, in, I've known the in and out of several data science applications, uh, uh, whether it's uh, data management, uh, uh, predictive modeling, uh, uh, you know, um, descriptive inferential, uh, forecasting, uh, complex, uh, for example, meta heuristic, uh, um, uh, you know, complex simulations, etc. Uh, from obviously an affiliation perspective, perhaps I can highlight that. Uh, in 2015, I've been awarded by a specific, specialized publication as uh, best data scientist in quotes uh, in the UK for some work that I did uh, by repurposing some um, quite interesting model called agent-based models. Again, i am leave these uh, to you. I'm sure that you have my LinkedIn uh, link as well. So feel free to connect uh, and uh, ask if you want to know more. Um, so again, well, let's get into the the, the 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 live section you know section of the presentation. Um, I spoke about tech innovation curve. So let me just briefly walk you through a history, or I call a history of uh, of communication. As you see, I'm I'm taking this quite far back. Okay, I uh, started from uh, 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 the uh, 1800 uh, from uh, letters. But again, if you see uh, from an evolution, uh, uh, you know, again, uh, um, evolution standpoint you will see that uh, uh, there has been quite some fast evolution in the next 100 years, and particularly with telegraph and obviously telephone around 1900. Um, interestingly enough, obviously, as we all know, and I'm, again, I'm not going to predicate this to you, explain this to you, uh, or to this audience uh, about the innovation that we have uh, uh, you know, uh, witnessed uh, from 1980 onwards. Uh, something that is important, perhaps, to say as we go through this much faster innovation, and this curve uh, that became uh, so much faster, uh, also from a speed perspective. Uh, again, 2000 with social media and digital channels, for example. I just want to highlight something that happened sometimes between the 900 1980. Um, uh, that we had the first soft, you know, statistical software company, um, SaaS uh, statistical software. Uh, most of you probably are familiar with or you have heard about was born between 1966 and 1976, if I'm not correct, if I'm correct, uh, launching this period. Uh, so before this, we really, uh, we had very little abilities uh, uh, to compute uh, and perform complex algorithms. Uh, I'm putting this in parallel, I didn't put this in, in the slide just to create a parallel in terms of where evolution of analytics and evolution of uh, communication went in parallel. And again, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, clearly map it one-to-one, -one, but you can see how these uh, changed over time. And what changed also is the type of communication. Uh, we see the legend over here, whether uh, it's been communication, a fixed communication system to mobile communication system, to something that we can call nowadays a virtual communication system. And something that we should all pay attention to and sure that most of you would be uh, very familiar with is what we call virtual worlds nowadays. And it's not only the metaverse of the likes, but it's also actually the various applications of what this means for the world of analytics at the same time. So today, what we're gonna be looking at is uh, the old version of analytics, which means what it has meant uh, since 19, probably 76 till today, and what virtual analytics will mean moving forward. Um, Well, fantastic. Okay, let me move to next next slide. Let's get into the meaty bits again, even more so. Um, so we're talking about data science. As I said data science is our key topics for today, and really what we're going to be discussing today. Um, I know that the focus is equally on artificial intelligence. 
you will see I will touch upon artificial intelligence methodologies, I'm sure you will be familiar with. Uh, I will obviously categorize them from a data science perspective, specifically uh, from a work uh, environment perspective, work package perspective. Um, and you'll see what I mean. Um, but first and foremost, if you look at it from uh, um, any industry perspective, in fact, if you actually collate all industries outside, um, out there, from finance to retail, uh, manufacturing, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, you know, risk management, et cetera, and whatsoever, you will see you could categorize uh, virtually every single company out there according to two sort of axes, competitive advantage and the ability to monetize their data. And as you go through um, these and uh, you start mapping all firms, you will see that there is a natural trajectory. I'm, gonna I'm not gonna describe all that you're seeing on the slides, but you will see that there is this natural trajectory, which is really in reality shapes up like an S curve where we get to um, final stage of what we call optimized stage. Um, this is where lots of firms sit nowadays. So you will probably be able to categorize every single firm out there in this spectrum between raw data and optimized. And you'll see that there are various functions and various ways that they will have to monetize the data they're sitting on. This is something that we see very clearly in the market. Um, I'm sharing with you. Also, because he underpins the next few, you know, a few slides you will see in terms of trajectory. Um, uh, perhaps I will ask you an open question uh, and perhaps pause for a second and maybe ask you, um, where do you think companies sit the most nowadays, 2022? Where do you think do they sit on this um, curve? And I'll pause a second, perhaps makes you, make you think, and uh, I'll provide you my best answer. So I hope this was a sort of start, maybe, um, you know, making you think about, you know, perhaps companies you work with, companies you like, companies you um, know of very well, and where do you think they sit, of companies that you work for, uh, perhaps in the function of analytics or not, and uh, you could apply your knowledge to see where companies may actually sit over here. You may see lots of companies performing statistical analysis, a prediction like predictive modeling, forecasting model, et cetera, et cetera. But the truth is that lots of companies sit right here, right between, oh, apologies, between uh, query drill down and statistical analysis. So as a consultant, which most of you will become, or as a, a head of data science, uh, or as a, a business analyst that will drive an agenda, this is where you may actually find lots of your future companies sitting in and trying to push them upwards on this. Having said this, um, something else that is important to, to highlight is from a practical ap uh, application perspective, what does it mean data science nowadays? And here you'll see a uh, non-exhausting purposely list of things that data science can mean nowadays. Um, here we're ranging from response modeling all the way to risk prediction. There are various applications that you can uh, um, sort of uh, mentally right here and right now apply to various industries, um, but they are very different in nature. Um, and if, again, I'm not gonna get into the details, the technical details or um, algorithmic details of all these things, but obviously these are fundamentally different and do fundamentally different things. You have clients asking for one thing and perhaps wanting another one. And this is something very common as well you see in the market. And so obviously as a person that understands analytics is also, I believe uh, your duty, our duty collectively to understand where um, our uh, clients, companies, colleagues, uh, bosses, uh, executives sit mentally and physically and where they actually need to go. Uh, again, it's very interesting. Uh, again, let me just pick a few ones here. Um, you know, again, social media analytics, for example, be incredibly famous and incredibly popular. And nowadays, there is no single company that doesn't perform social media listening, as is said in jargon. Uh, but there are several companies that they actually struggle to mix this data with the other data, for example, CRM data or sales data, and actually coherently report or make sense of these data. And so these are the type of advantages and, and uh, uh, that you can bring uh, to the market 
by uh, spearheading some of these areas. Uh, some of these areas uh, you may see over here, even areas that you may be very familiar with that have been up and about, out and about for a very long time, they still can be refined. And some of the refinition will come not only from a computational perspective, so computational power, which enable end user or super user to do more, to get more done, but also uh, for companies to exploit more of this data, to monetize more out of this data, to monetize more out of these various statistical components and models you see on this slide. Um, again, this is still what we think of data science today means that what we have been thinking of data science until now, till 1976, until the first computational uh, uh, algorithm and system was actually created. So let me give you a few examples. Again, I want to bring this to life for everyone. Uh, what does this all mean um, in practice? So I, I brought up three very specific examples, uh, although, although I'll be there's a specific example. This is an example you could apply to various industries as well, uh, virtually. Um, so, for example, uh, this is something that happened with, um, again, I, can, I, I obviously have to uh, strip out every single name from clients. Again, I cannot share those, but I can tell you that this was a company, very large company working in the insurance industry. Um, they have a large problem from a call center perspective. Uh, bleeding money, as a matter of fact, you see here, 10, down, 10 million pounds uh, over a year of missed opportunities, if you can, if you, uh, uh, include some cost and other loss opportunities right here. Um, one of the solution that uh, you may want to think right here is a forecasting solution. Again, we could get into the, you know, uh, caveats of forecasting versus uh, prediction here, but again, it's not purposely my, the scope of what I'm trying to, to lead here, but I'm just trying to lead that uh, there's always something that can be done for a given situation or a business problem. And in this case, analytics can be utilized, in this case, forecasting model, where ultimately you're able, you will be able to you know, leverage uh, um, econometric models, as a matter of fact, more specifically, to improve the allocation of efforts, and particularly FT allocation, but also at the same time, reduce, reduce forecasting time. Um, usually, uh, you, know, you could, uh, uh, you know, many times you will find clients they perhaps are stuck in an Excel version of this forecasting, very rule-based, and they may want to move to something that is more stochastic, is something more statistically based. Uh, again, usually there are uh, benefits you will collate. These are typical benefits you see right here on the slides. Uh, things like uh, increase in precision of forecast, uh, 50%. So this is obviously an accuracy metric, uh, rather than uh, um, the ability to obviously automate uh, end-to-end -to, -end to avoid the manual intervention through algorithmic intervention. So scripts and uh, other uh, uh, things that can be added from an MLOps, uh, probably some of you will be uh, familiar with this, to your forecasting model to fully automate it end-to-end. -end. Uh, again, and these obviously reduce for this specific client uh, forecasting time from 30 days to barely 10 minutes. So you see the power of, of, of analytics here in play, uh, in action. Another possible example I want to bring uh, to the table is an example that is more common to the uh, digital world, and particularly for uh, uh, fashion retail. Um, this is a typical example of uh, recommendation engine. You may be familiar when you go and buy something on uh, a large marketplace website, you will have recommendation, what are the next, next best product, if something is called next best product or next best action <clears throat> in jargon. And again, this is a typical example that uh, uh, helps toward uh, what we call personalization, a web personalization and uh, a dot-com personalization and app personalization. This specific example was used on the dot-com side. Um, and uh, more specifically, this was a recommendation engine that coherently uh, provided uh, every single viewer and every single traffic uh, 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 person that uh, generate traffic through the website uh, with an actual personalized recommendation engine based on IP address and other characteristics that are collated uh, through the surfing of the uh, customer uh, across uh, the dot-com platform in this case. Um, Specifically, uh, uh, recommendations were provided uh, for each single category. 
Uh, and uh, again, on average, there was a benefit of 16% uh, increase uh, product uptake. So again, this is uh, calculated as a percentage of the of total product. Uh, uh, so product selected over total product um, of 16%. So very big, again, I uh, think that uh, uh, if you translate this into a pre-tax profit and you sum all the categories where this was applied as a logic, as a recommendation engine, you can actually uh, sum up to 44% uh, of pre-tax profit uh, increase. So again, you see how uh, analytics, and this is the point I'm trying to uh, get across, how analytics can directly translate and does directly translate to a specific benefit that uh, in this case, chief marketing officer, a chief financial officer uh, can then harvest and present to their own investors. Uh, last example from what I would call data science today before we move on what I would probably call the future, one of the possible future of data science, and it's very speculative, and I'm sure that uh, perhaps will be a few questions in the back end, which is, again, would purposely be a thought-provoking session as such. Uh, this other uh, example is, uh, in fact, for, as you see, um, for a, a, a famous uh, a telecommunication company. Uh, um, I worked with in the past. Uh, this was a typical uh, uh, company that's uh, um, where they have a vast uh, uh, amount of customers, so very large customer database, as typical of telco companies. Uh, uh, but uh, they are unable to segment and uh, provide uh, um, uh, customer analytics across each segment. Uh, so this is a typical solution uh, that uh, uh, you will provide, regardless, in fact, of uh, the platform you would use. You could provide this with a specific platform as well as with an open source. Uh, if you are very clever with R or Python, you can deliver all these end to end with open source technology. Um, so in this case, we're talking about segmentation analytics, uh, particularly what we would call a factory model approach. Uh, again, I leave these to you guys perhaps to uh, dig in in your own free time perhaps. A model factory approach means uh, that uh, you could apply one statistical model to the whole segment, uh, seeing the whole population of, the, of your, uh, say, customer base as a whole segment. However, you could also apply a, a, a clustering algorithm, for example, a k-means to be specific to your overall population, uh, segment these, cluster them in uh, various small bits, uh, which uh, are significant. And again, uh, I, I leave that significant discriminant analysis to you, uh, perhaps to research in your free time purposely not getting too technical or solving technical caveats here. Uh, but then ultimately you may want as a factory model approach, you may want to uh, generate as many models as uh, the number of segments you will have and create specificity in each segment by understanding what drives each segment toward the single action, which is the very nature of a predicting model. In this case, if you go for this type of approach, it's very quick to generate and unleash very great potential for firms. In this case, for telecommunication firms, which again is a firm in the industry that worldwide you could, uh, uh, you could perhaps, uh, I don't think with very, very, very few exceptions, you can claim it's a very saturated market. Um, so a market where it's very easy to uh, lose a customer. It's very difficult to acquire a new customer. Uh, it's very interesting how a simple model like this uh, or a concatenation of simple model like this uh, would generate a 15% marginal uplift, for example, uh, on top three segments as uh, VIPs, the top three VIP segments, for example. Uh, there is also an improvement on net presence score uh, in this case, which is a measure for customer experience of about 15%, which is something that uh, I'm sure that if you have worked ever with the chief officers, it's something that usually pleases the board to a fairly large extent. So again, uh, up to this slide, what I've tried to do is to highlight uh, what uh, analytics has been, and it is still nowadays, and some of the typical exercises you may be involved in the future uh, as uh, a, an expert of data science and artificial intelligence yourself. Um, having said this, um, it's also true, and again, something else, and this is very quick, and I'm not gonna, I don't want to highlight this, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but also with in mind the fact that obviously you are attending master degrees, uh, most of you would be uh, going into uh, a work placement situation. So purposely, I 
wanted to put up uh, a quick slide in terms of what it means within each of the industry of consulting, uh, working for agency, uh, and uh, working within an industry, for example, as head of data science, or as data scientist within a firm. What does that mean from a uh, data science application? What do you will find more often than not uh, yourself involved with? And I just leave these slides up, and again, I'm not gonna repeat myself, but uh, uh, perhaps there will be some questions later on. But again, I try to sort of subdivide here what would mean working in consulting in data science uh, for an agency in data science and within a specific industry. In fact, you can equally apply this to any industry out there. So I'll take a little break, have a sip of water, and I will jump on the next section. <clears throat> Fantastic. Okay. Let's move to the next section, uh, next section where I'm sure that things will be uh, get quite, uh, quite interesting. Uh, before moving there, I want to highlight something. Um, I know that uh, you may have heard, you will surely have heard of digital transformation. And I want, put, I want to put things purposely into a perspective. If you count, if you account for the digital transformation market overall, uh, and you can Google this yourself, these are very publicly available number, you will find number across around $400 billion projected in 2021. Uh, this was a projected number. I think that this is a number that currently is being realized uh, in some industry, particularly thanks to pandemic, because lots of uh, uh, digital, um, uh, you know, dig digital uh, was, um, Yes, sorry. So I'll try to speed up on, on the next one. So again, keep in mind this number 400 billion because this is gonna be important when we talk about data science tomorrow. So uh, this is an environment that you probably are already familiar with. Uh, cryptocurrency, virtual world, NFTs, gaming world and blockchain. This is where uh, lots of uh, digital world is moving into. This is what we call virtual transformation is probably the uh, uh, joining efforts, uh, joint efforts of all these uh, five areas uh, from a data and analytical perspective, but also from uh, uh, mm, implementation perspective. Um, so let's just look at very quickly. Again, I'm not gonna walk through, I'm gonna walk you through uh, all the slides, uh, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna speak about all the slides. So in this specific case, uh, we're talking about virtual worlds and what this would mean to uh, your possible employers, what this could mean to yourself as well. So again, if you think about uh, uh, all the various applications from a data standpoint of virtual world, all the ways you can retrieve virtual worlds from whether it's a blockchain, whether it's a, a, a REST API, or it's a platform that you may be utilizing to develop the virtual world. And in this same virtual world, you'll be able to uh, define ownership, uh, design items, and interact with items and provide uh, non-fungible tokens, NFTs, which uh, most of you will be uh, familiar with, uh, to clients as well, to increase, for example, retention, uh, their VIP uptake, uh, or whether just to uh, create brand awareness. So this is a very interesting scenario that is opening up. Equally for NFTs, there is a quite an interesting scenario where you would perhaps uh, think about NFTs as something that is more of a production machine. You start seeing already agencies out there working toward this. And again, uh, the way that I would like you all to think is from a data per angle, data perspective. So uh, what does this mean, and particularly from a market perspective? So remember that 400 billion number that we've seen before. Well, if you look at projections of data science, uh, uh, well, in particularly of uh, innovation and technology, which embeds and includes data science, uh, when it comes to um, virtual, these accounts for over 1 trillion. So again, it's more than twice as much as the number we've seen before for digital. So again, I leave to you uh, to uh, do, you know, draw the conclusions here in terms of the size of the market and the interest that this may unleash for any of us here uh, on this call today. And I will leave you with three simple application use cases. Again, I'll show you three simple use cases uh, and applications to of the digital transformation and what we call analytics nowadays. 
what you'll see in the next three slides is something that has not been developed yet. It's, uh, uh, there are agencies out there, there are companies out there, there are um, uh, virtual, specific virtual agencies, uh, virtual analytics agencies out there that are trying to develop this, but it's all very much work in progress. Um, there are some companies that, again, have some partial solutions around this, but there is no company or no single repository for uh, an overall solution for all the problems you'll see in these next slides. Um, and these are just some possible applications. And I'm sure that the sky is the limit here, and uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you will be able to come up with uh, different applications here. So, for example, you look at it from a virtual world perspective, and uh, just limit yourself to uh, uh, AR and VR use cases, for example. You will see that there is uh, some specific data management needs that will arise with the advent of, uh, of virtual and the advent of data science applied to virtual particularly the fact that you may want to perform uh, some virtual data governance, which is a concept on its own, which still needs to be de uh, developed. What does this really mean? Again, it's still a question mark. Uh, again, uh, just spending the last few minutes on, on these next applications, just cherry picking some. For example, from a data science per, uh, perspective, it would be very interesting to understand what a visual range analytics means. So uh, it's a bit like a first person shooter games. So and then most of you, or some of you will maybe uh, avid gamers as well. So if you think about it this way, it's basically all that you can display and view and utilize in the what you see on the screen, whether you have an Ocul Oculus Rift of similar or whether you are playing or operating from your own desktop, for example. Uh, and anything can appear here becomes of an interest. So uh, that visual appeal, and uh, that's uh, uh, AI application of it, it becomes something that becomes incredibly interesting. At the same time, visual policing may be quite uh, something interesting. Again, it would be very difficult for each uh, uh, individual uh, virtual room and environment, et cetera, et cetera, to perform policing. Think about a kid's environment where you don't want certain type of behaviors to ever manifest or ever happen. How do you prevent that? And how do you associate your brand awareness to a clean environment, for example? These are all very open questions nowadays. You see over here, I also appended some key and, and core data and I skill set that will be required. Again, moving forward, there are a few other examples around NFTs. And again, I'm going to just cherry pick a few here. Uh, things like, for example, um, NFT data collection. It's a big question mark. Uh, is this even possible uh, contractually? because then we know that NFTs are often a collection of contracts and that's how often are seen in the market and interpreted in the market. Um, so uh, very interesting how companies may or may not be able to keep track of NFTs and uh, see how these exchange hands and how they change in values as well. Uh, very interesting from a trading and NFT trading perspective, which open up a whole can of worms for companies that uh, right now they do not even perform such a function such as trading, and will force into trading in the future. Again, this again opens so many of the different possibilities, um, as you can think. And again, here I'm listing also visual analytics and all the things you can perform. For example, how would you consume? How would a, cons uh, a consumer, you know, think about yourself going into a 3D environment. How would you consume a 3D object? Um, on digital, we thought about consumption as conversion. We had gave it specific metrics, for example. But in the virtual world, we do not talk anymore about simple conversion. There must be some visual way to convert, to consume an object visually, and then uh, uh, remember it. There must be something around that. So again, there are lots of research that is actually currently carried out around this, this area as well. So I just want to highlight this. And there are specific skill set uh, from a data and the AI perspective that are required. Last application, and I promise this is the last slide, uh, it's around uh, 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 the supply chain. Again, this is something very different and often something that is uh, uh, overlooked as well. Uh, and is the power that lots of companies are already uh, harvesting right now of NFTs and virtual world and what this means to uh, loyalty, for example. Um, loyalty and uh, how, how well, you know, on transparency across the supply chain. Uh, you can apply uh, blockchain concepts here. And again, you will quickly think how uh, you will be able to um, uh, address things like data security across supply chain, but also things like sustainability 
and uh, money, you know, demonstrate sustainability across uh, across the board, whether it's across your supply chain or directly to your consumers. And there are lots of very famous applications across these uh, in various countries. I'm sure you are familiar too. A very famous, uh, uh, something that I'm currently having conversations with clients about is this next generation loyalty analytics, uh, which uh, uh, again, um, sort of starts from the supply chain uh, idea of putting everything on a blockchain and creating something transparent, but actually develops it uh, uh, from, uh, you know, underpins also usage of NFTs uh, uh, and a, a very uh, crucial client facing uh, uh, moment of truth. Um, it's a very interesting application. I definitely would invite you to look into it uh, if you haven't already. Um, and uh, uh, I will probably leave you uh, with uh, just just quick conclusions uh, and uh, perhaps I'll leave it to if there's any, any question from the audience and uh, you know, some key takeaways. So we looked today at some, you know, some data science examples uh, that are uh, pretty bread and butter, we'll probably say it uh, for data scientists. We look at uh, what we will probably call uh, digital transformation. So lots of these examples are part here and part of digital transformation. Well, we also be looking at how this will change and is already changing from a virtual standpoint. So this is, a, again, a word that perhaps you, are, you, you may start hearing already, but there is something around virtual transformation that is going to be happening uh, in the next uh, years or so. Uh, and it's something that's probably quite unstoppable from, uh, from an investment perspective and an innovation perspective. Um, we talk about virtual world. We talk about what uh, data science means uh, with the, uh, you know, once virtual worlds comes in. Obviously, we were not purposely exhaustive because this is something uh, still a subject that is under research, um, as you will appreciate. Uh, but also, there are two things that are important that everything that uh, uh, data scientists have developed, and this is something you will quickly realize for digital uh, transformation from an analytical perspective can be translated and can be lifted and shifted for uh, the virtual transformation, but not the vice versa, because there will be different application from virtual. They are proper to virtual, will be completely brand new application from a statistical uh, data science perspective. Uh, last but not least, uh, I'm sure that lots of you will have a lot of fun once these things will happen, whether you are a modeler or you are a manager, business manager, or you are an IT manager, these are very interesting problems to have. That's how I want to leave these, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, this conversation. And that's probably that's the last uh, bits of knowledge I want to share with you. Thanks, everyone. And I will stop sharing now. Uh, I will probably go on uh, uh, this Q&A slide uh, just and pause for a second and just see whether there is any question from you. and advances in the data sciences field. Thank you very much from our side. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I request another international expert speaker for today's session, Mr. Ayan Shenon. Sir, if you could join and start your session, please. Over to you, Mr. Ayan Shenon, sir. Senior Healthcare Solutions Division, Senior Manager from United Kingdom. Thank you. Please, sir. Uh, we can see you, Ian. Uh, can't hear you. What about now, Civic? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Uh, thank you. Namaste, India. Hopefully, I've pronounced that correctly. Um, first of all, it's my honor and privilege to be here. Um, to be part of the International Conference on Recent Advances in Artificial Intelligence and Data Science, organized by IBM RD. I want to sincerely thank Dr. VK Patil Foundation and thank IBM RD uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. I would also like to extend my thanks to Dr. Sanjay, Director of IBM RD for, and his team for inviting me. So. Suvik, I will start sharing my screen, if that's okay. Yeah, that's okay, Ian, please go ahead.
Okay, Suvik, can everybody see the screen? We can see your screen, Jan. Okay, so thank you once again. Um, so my talk is uh, going to be specifically around healthcare, healthcare in the United Kingdom, uh, focusing on the National Health Service. And what, what I'm going to talk about for the next 15, 20 minutes or so is um, practical examples of artificial intelligence and in healthcare. And these are purely based on my own experiences. So this is not an exhaustive list. This is just simply um, uh, what my experiences have been over the past uh, number of uh, years and months. And hopefully it's of benefit um, to you. So if I could just want to check this first slide, you can see it, introduction and objectives. Absolutely fine, Ian. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So in terms of the introduction and objectives of this talk, so allow me to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ian Shannon, Senior Manager with BT, and I work within BT Healthcare Solutions. Uh, my role is that of um, a solutions lead for future ready infrastructure. So organizations such as the NHS have ambitions to launch um, a number of digital services um, uh, in line with their transformation, their digital transformation roadmaps. And you heard Alessandro talk about digital transformation earlier on there. Um, my, my role is to help organizations like the NHS um, ensure that they have the underpinning infrastructure to be able to deliver future digital services over the next five and 10 years. I have a background in software engineering and I have 28 years experience in the ICT digital sector and 15 years of those 20 years I have been focused on delivering solutions at an enterprise level into the NHS. And I've provided my LinkedIn uh, reference there if anybody wants to get in touch, ask any questions afterwards, for example. In terms of objectives, there's two main objectives. The first one is that uh, you're, you're going to gain a perspective of how to approach the use of technology uh, in healthcare. And that's very important. There's a number of things that we need to consider. Technology um, is, is brilliant and we all love technology, but it's actually how we apply technology to, in this case, healthcare, that is the important mindset to adopt. I'm going to give you a number of real life healthcare examples how we have actually, how BT have leveraged that technology for the benefit of the patient and other clinical stakeholders, okay? And the topics we're going to focus on, okay, again, based purely on my own experiences, are um, AI and healthcare, and I'm also going to look at future wireless technologies, and then I'm going to bring them together to show how they actually, from a, from a use case perspective, how they matter to both the the, the National Health Service, so a hospital setting, and also for the, the individual as well, the patient. So in terms of the next slides, um, I'm just gonna take one minute to explain who BT are, in case you don't know who we are. Uh, I suppose it's fair to say we are one of the world's leading communication services companies. We've been around for about 175 years. I suppose our origins lie, you know, something similar as I understand it to BSNL in India as it was back in the day. And uh, we have, you know, transformed um, uh, over the years. I suppose uh, to make it um, comparable to um, another uh, organization you may be familiar with in India, we would be a competitor um, of, um, of Vodafone, for example. We provide products and services globally about to 180 uh, countries. Um, we have three core brands, BT, British Telecom, EE, and Plusnet, okay? And it was interesting, and your previous speaker was talking about using um, uh, data science techniques uh, for EE, and that's absolutely true. BT use um, AI, ML, and data science on our internal processes to gain efficiencies, operational efficiencies, where there may be a financial impact, but ultimately it's all about Again, as your last speaker commented, increasing NPS scores because for companies like, you know, uh, BT for Vodafone, for example, NPS scores are absolutely critical. In terms of knowing more about BT, again, there's a link there if you want to make a note of it. And but ultimately, our ambition by 2030 is to become the world's most trusted connector of devices, people, etc. And ultimately, we want to connect for good. That's our vision statement. That's the summary of our vision statement. In terms of the impact on the UK uh, and, and, and BT's impact, 
um, some, some numbers that I'll just call a couple out. Uh, uh, we, we have 55% of 5G coverage across um, uh, half the UK population, which is the number one in, in the UK. So EE as a BT brand are the number one um, mobile provider. And I think that's been tested um, and validated independently for the past nine years. And we have, we've been awarded that um, sort of credential. We, have, we, have, we, we thwart and we stop about 6,500 cyber attacks every single day. And we use AI and ML at the heart of that to, 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 to stop that, to stop those attacks. And in terms of BT's overall financial impact on the economy, the positive benefit you can read there is, that was the headline from a newspaper article. So BT adds 24 billion pounds sterling to the UK economy and supports 300,000 jobs. And I think for every 75 pounds of GDP in the UK economy, BT contributed at least to at least one pound of that, which is quite significant for one company. So specifically BT Health, who are we? Well, uh, a, a NHS focused business to business vertical business unit was set up within um, enterprise, Enterprises Division X. So within BT, you have a number of what they call customer facing units. I work within enterprise, and then within that Division X, and it's an innovation hub that's been set up. And it's the area that focuses on 5G, IoT, and all the leading edge technologies. And within Division X, there's a number of verticals, and I work within the BT Health vertical. So our sole focus is to serve the National Health Service of the United Kingdom, okay? We have a clinical board um, uh, within BT Health. So what that means is they provide us with, so they, they're actually, um, I think it's nine or 10 clinicians. So from a nursing background, from a, uh, a general practitioner background, from surgical background, uh, radiology and, uh, and other disciplines. They, so they're actually either ex-NHS staff members who, who now work for us, or they're, they're splitting their time between BT and the NHS. And they give us a clinical insight into all that we do. So any proposal that we make to the customer, any presentation, it always has that very important clinical lens. So it's not just us selling um, an idea or technology to the customer uh, just based on technology. It has to be about you know, the clinical benefit that it's going to bring. So we have a clinical board and we're led by uh, our healthcare director, um, who's called Professor Sultan Mahmood, who was actually a former NHS CIO. So uh, Sultan uh, is bringing that uh, uh, expertise and insight to our, our, our business, which is, which is invaluable. And bringing all that together within BT Health, that means we can go to the market and we can offer um, digital, clinical, and NHS operational experience, which is actually unique. It's a USP for us in the in the UK um, NHS market. And really, our ambition within BT Health is to be, as the statement says, the foremost trusted, innovative, and effective partner to the NHS. BT have have worked with the NHS since its inception in 1948. And below, we I'm just calling out a number of key things that we have that we have. Um, Sorry, excuse me, something's popped up on the screen. So the icons represent, sorry, the icons just represent um, a number of things that we have uh, worked with the NHS on and supported them through. So for example, in terms of the emergency services number, the 999 service, okay, we manage all six of the UK contact centres and we use all sorts of technologies to help us identify peaks and troughs and contact, contact centre flows to make sure that the 999 service is resilient. During the pandemic, we peaked at about 105,000 calls per day, and that went on for about two years. And the network and the services around that were resilient and stood up. BT was the trusted partner of the government to stand up the vaccination centres and the Nightingale centres during the middle of the pandemic as well. Um, and really, I suppose it's fair to say there was probably not too many in the UK who could have reacted and stood up at scale and, and I suppose mobilized at pace and scale in the same way that we did. In terms of R&D, we have, we have an applied research unit at Adastral Park where we are continually innovating across all sectors and we have a healthcare um, uh, innovation suite uh, there. And we, um, uh, we have spent something like 2.5 billion in the last five years um, on innovation and R&D is at the heart of what we do. 
Um, and uh, if you ever get a chance to visit a Dastral, and you can do virtual tours of a Dastral, it, it's well worth doing. It's incredibly um, impressive. And something at the end here, um, HIMS. So HIMS are a digital maturity um, assessment uh, accreditor. Uh, I myself am a HIMS accredited assessor and um, they're focused on the healthcare and we are a digital health technology partner and we can use the HIMS um, maturity model as a as a as one particular tool um, to assess digital maturity of an organization uh, and that's part of a consulting offer that we that we have within BT Health. Okay. Before I move on, Suvik, everybody can still hear me okay? Is that all right? Uh, yes, we can hear you very clearly. Thank you very much, Ian. I, I, I can only really see my screen, Suvik, so I can't see what's happening. <laughs> That's okay. Look, before we start, I just I, I just wanted to, to share this screen with you because I think this is something that's incredibly important, whether you work for... Uh, uh, for me, this is important in, in the healthcare setting, but if you work in a different... Um, uh, sector, this is equally important. I think it's the principles behind here. We always start at the top here with, in my case, the patient and clinical outcomes. We always start with that, okay? We always consider what we're trying to achieve here. What is the positive impact it's going to have on the, the patient or the clinician? Or what we're about to do here, will it have a negative impact? We always have to think about the outcomes on the patient. We then build up a number of use cases, okay? And ultimately at the bottom, it's about laying the solid foundations. And whilst we're talking about data science and AI and ML and all these wonderful things, technology is brilliant, but it is always the enabler, okay? And I think that's a very important point I want to call out. Technology is brilliant as it is, always considered to be the enabler. So on the left-hand side, if we work our way down the arrow. So if we consider those in that top-down approach, okay, I think that's that's a good that's a good message to take away. Always consider the patient, the use cases, then how we're going to use technology to deliver on those outcomes. Okay. And then on the right hand side, when we look at the arrow going back up, if we lay the right foundations, if we lay the right platform for current and future digital services, ultimately as we go back up through the levels there, it will inevitably um, result in an enhanced patient uh, experience and, and journey throughout all their, their care pathways. Okay. So some examples that I have worked on in the past um, couple of years, some of these are uh, projects that have, are now um, established and are, and are running on their own. And some of these examples are actually things that I'm working on at the moment and we are, we're designing. So in, in terms of the first set of examples, um, they're around the topic of intelligent automation, okay? Um, an intelligent automation by its very nature is available 24 seven, which means, uh, you know, the computer doesn't need to take a break, doesn't need a coffee break, lunch or whatever. It can just function and perform the, the particular tasks that have been um, assigned. And, and, and in these scenarios, can sometimes be more efficient and more appropriate to, to uh, let um, a machine do rather than let, let, let a human do, okay? So the first example is providing a, a, a front door portal, um, as, as I'm calling it, to gather insights on a, a patient query. Um, so a patient may, uh, uh, so basically, I'm sure everybody understands what a chatbot or virtual assistant or, uh, is. It's basically on, on, on your website, uh, typically bottom right, you'll get the little pop-up to say, how can I help you today? And that is usually um, just a front door into uh, a system that could be just maybe based on uh, frequently asked questions, could have a little bit of intelligence built around it, or could be a full-blown conversational AI platform, okay? So in the examples that I've been working on, it's a triage platform, not medical. We're not letting the machine diagnose a patient for medical issues, but it is, it's rather, it's about actually, say, you know, the the patient providing information on on their 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 situation and ultimately it's about triaging that that point of contact um, to the right department um, as soon as possible and the point about that is that it eases pressure on the backlog that exists at that point in time that's the that's, that's one immediate benefit of it the nhs is under immense pressure right now around backlogs and waiting times and so forth. So anything that we can do where there's a, a buildup of demand and we can get that demand triaged, not medically again, um, out to the appropriate departments as soon as we can, 
that's a good thing for patients, clinicians, and the entire system, okay? And the patient has a better experience. The patient feels they're being dealt with uh, uh, quicker and, uh, uh, and more accurately, I suppose. And something else I've worked on is around um, appointment management. There's a lot of do not attend uh, um, scenarios within, within the NHS where patients, for a multitude of reasons, have been unable to um, attend um, uh, appointments. So having a 24-7 um, uh, appointment scheduling system that has a degree of intelligent uh, um, automation uh, built into it. It provides the patient with a, a flexible approach, not having to wait the phone and be in a backlog or a queue between nine and five Monday to Friday. If it's available to them out of hours, they can then um, feel they've been dealt with. Again, increases, increases patient satisfaction. And ultimately, no shows cause so much disruption to the NHS. It, it, you know, it's it, and being able to address those problems does really save you know time, money, and, and frustrations. Uh, it, it's a real headache for clinicians uh, when do not shows uh, uh, happen. The other area around intelligent automation that I've been working on is around robotic process automation. And one of the very first things that I ever worked on was around, I suppose, just automating uh, low-level uh, uh, non-risk. Uh, non-risky tasks, okay, and applying a degree of AI to those um, to those tasks where they're repetitive. And the, the scenarios that we see are quite often uh, back office um, focused, whereby, and I can, so the example I'm actually thinking of, we had an individual who had to sit with, with, with two screens, two applications, and there was no easy integration path. And it, 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 it wasn't. It was copy and paste that they had to do between the applications, but uh, uh, there were seasonal peaks, and this meant thousands and thousands of applications um, um, or paperwork had to be transcribed from one system to another. Um, it would have been thousands within the month, and that just was not a good use of um, the staff members' time. So uh, there was a bit of workflow that we had to build as part of that process, using AI to help us do that and, and model various scenarios. So that, that basically um, enabled that staff member to go and focus on higher value work. And it was more rewarding for them as well. And because the process was well known, we, could, we, could, we had a, a very high level percentage of confidence that there was going to be little to zero mistakes really whenever the, the, um, the, the, the machine was doing the, supposedly the copy and the paste between the two, the two systems. And again, this scenario is quite common and it does manage administration uh, backlogs. And as I say, machines can work faster than, than humans 24 seven basis. So those kind of activities, it does, it does make sense. But moving beyond the, um, the that, you know, automation of the tasks, we're, we're moving into what's called complemented robotic process automation and hyper automation. And again, where we have seen, um, benefit brought to, to the customer is around integration capability. So in certain circumstances, uh, RPA can be used to bridge the gap um, where there's no obvious route to integrate between different systems, where there needs to be a degree of what's called data orchestration and manipulation. Okay, But RPA tools can help us do that. And ultimately, that saves hospitals and the NHS money and avoids expensive integration projects. I need to be very careful in selecting which kind of engagements are appropriate for RPA from an integration perspective, but under you know, certain use cases will, will lend themselves to it. But again, it's just, a, it's just to bear that in mind. If you're ever working in a systems integration um, environment, you may come across that, that scenario ultimately. Um, where we use AI and ML uh, in terms of RPA for, for, for this uh, kind of scenario, it's ultimately about um, uh, once we've done the integration and data orchestration, we want to look at certain data sets and we want to extract um, those data sets into typically what's called a data lake, data warehouse, because ultimately it will go upstream into the business for um, visualization, i.e. there's actionable insights are being presented based on the AI that's been um, undertaken against those data sets and they're presented to um, CXO level for, for subsequent uh, action. Okay. Any questions on that example of intelligence automation? 
I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I think we have a short of time. I'm extremely sorry about that. So would you, would you mind just uh, running through quickly for them? Yep. Okay, sure. So cybersecurity, um, uh, really, where, where we see AI being played out in cybersecurity is ultimately around this concept of creating immutable data sets. Okay. And that's really protecting your data set from, from cyber cyber attack. And we use ML, AI and analytics to help, help us identify the spectrum of threats that we need to protect against. Um, diagnostic imaging is where we move services from a hospital setting out to the community. And really where, we, where we're seeing AI there is in the example of um, having uh, services offered away from the hospital, AI applied to diagnostic imaging. So if you have an ultrasound, X-ray, MRI, et cetera, patterns can be looked for and explored for further consultation. Um, uh, uh, you know, AI can be applied to the actual images them, them, themselves. So in terms of really bringing it together, BT, obviously, as a, as a communications provider, we work across a number of different um, connectivity uh, layers, Wi-Fi, 5G, uh, sa satellite and IoT. And uh, I'll, I'll not go into this in detail, but ultimately what we have here is a the diagram on the right-hand side, so it, is that we have a connectivity fabric, okay? Um, uh, all the different um, types of, of, of communication uh, elements or services that, that, that we offer. And that's really the, the, the data generation um, piece. And as we, as we then have uh, various um, uh, endpoints, such as IoT sensors, um, medical devices, clinical systems, feeding up into an ingestion and aggregation platform, they can be visualized. Ultimately, those insights are driven by uh, and improvements are, are offered. Insights are, are given via AI, ML, and uh, data analytics. And the reason why that's important, ultimately, from a hospital perspective, is that hospitals can uh, they, because NHS require hospitals to have what's called a command center, okay, and that's an aggregation platform that presents all the data feeds from a number of different sources to help them make um, better decisions. And from a patient perspective, um, we have the concept in the UK of um, virtual wards, so patients being treated and managed outside of the core hospital setting in their own home, uh, typically, and the uh, the use of um, you know these technologies. Um, overlaid with AI, analytics, and ML um, enable uh, such initiatives. And recap, always start with the patient, make sure you have the right foundational infrastructure. And if you're not sure if you are, if you're on the right foundations, under, please consider undertaking a digital maturity assessment to get a baseline position. Sorry, I had to rush that civic. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you, uh, Ian. Over to you, offshore team. Uh, pardon, say again. Uh, let me tell you that our both international speakers, experts uh, from their state, Netherlands and UK, they have shared their expertise with us. I would like to convey that in the uh, next seminar hall, students are also there and they are seeing the slides that are going on. They are seeing the sessions live, so students are also uh, taking this opportunity to hear from all the speakers, all the experts and the guests, uh, the things that are like happening over here. Now I would like to request Honorable Mr. Sunil Tildaksar, Managing Director, Peter Kotopak Private Limited, Arangabad, Chief Guest of the Public Risk Function, to enlighten us on this occasion. On this occasion, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Guy for Mr. Pinope, Mr. Bengali Bai, kind of management from Sandra Vikhi Patil Foundation, all faculties and those who have presented their papers and management students. And specifically, uh, the two delegates who put the load of my talking on artificial intelligence so that I should not have to take more time of the bus 
talking on artificial intelligence, but would like to talk something about the basic intelligence. So thanks, Ian and Alejandro, for making me free on the subject of the intelligence. And on this occasion, I must feel happy that there is an initiative on such a futuristic subjects of artificial intelligence, data science, deep learning, machine learning, which we feel that the Europeans and the world is ahead of the technology. In fact, they are ahead of the science and that the reason this is gap in between India and Western we can say. But if we go into the history of the India and if we go into the things, philosophically the Indians are very strong. But as a science, there looks to be a some gap. This science gives very easy solution and answer. No is motivated and we try to implement. <coughs> But really, we need to go into the deep of our history and we can lead the world. It's so simple that uh, I was uh, I was looking to the audience of this call. I feel it is being divided into two. And unfortunately, what the input I got, uh, the preparation I did, uh, it all went wrong perception of my preparation and I have to uh, I have to make a new preparation within an hour span because I was being told that, that uh, the students will be there from the management and uh, other things. But anyhow, I feel uh, this is a good uh, subject and we wish to discuss on the deeper and lighter. Artificial intelligence is nothing. It's, it's the application of what you learn, what level you learn and what implementation you want to first visualize, then experiment, then analyze, and then modify, and then visualize, and you can change the world. There was, a, there was one slide in which it was the return, raw data, then perfect data, then some reports, then some analysis, and then implementation, then strategy, then policy. It's like something in the today's program of artificial intelligence. There are around 58 human beings in this hall. Okay. There are some management side. There are some faculties. There are some people who are going to present their paper. And there are some management students. So there are 28 women, ladies or something, and they are around 30 men. So how many uh, girls are interested in this? How many lecturers are interested in this? How many management side inputs they are going to take? And then going to the next level, might be 56 will reduce to 30, it will reduce to 20, it will reduce to 10, it may reduce to a single person. And that single person taking benefit of such initiative is really going to be a, a future of such type of new concept. So I don't want to be having a monotonous dialogue for today. Might be some students from that hall may be listening. Okay. So uh, I can say good morning to that hall and let's be a participative in this uh, session by the next 10, 15, 20 minutes of my, although I don't have time limit, but I know there is a time constraint for everyone and I should be in my own limit. Okay. Regarding this intelligence, I just want to start a dialogue with simple one question or the, or the observation. An apple fall down. 
and go under Newton. Who was Newton? Uh, who was Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj? Uh, can I get from student? King of Maharashtra. King of Maharashtra. Good. Who was Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj? Can I get the answer? Because these are very basic answers. Yeah, you can, you can start. Son of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Who was Tukaram Maharaj? He was sick. He was sick. Who is Sujay Nikhepati? Huh? What? Member of Parliament. Member of Parliament. Okay. So, all these are the human, basically. Their upbringing, their nurturing, their thought process made someone a king made someone a saint, made someone a politician. And the same journey you can correlate to Vithal Rao Nikhe Pati first, then Mahasaya Nikhe Pati second, then Radha Krishna Nikhe Pati third, and Sujay Nikhe Pati. And the infrastructure and the development did by Vithal Rao Nikhe Pati and the infrastructure today with Sujay Nikhe Pati for the future is distinctly different, innovative as compared to the first day is a sign that we are growing and building the confidence we can do if we continuously keep ourselves changing from first stage to our stage. Basically, why we say we are a human, we are a man. What is the difference between man and animal? Can someone uh, 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 briefly distinguish? Can anyone? Because we think. Uh, we think before we ask. Think before we ask. Really, it is the, 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 the okay. We think and then we act. That's the reason we are bad. Someone is saying we we think. Okay. Any other answer for this? Might be there is difference between man and animal. So might be we are knowing. What is the difference? Humans are progressing. Animals are not progressing. Okay. Any reason for that? They work on what they think. They work on what they think. Okay, act on their thing. Okay. Good. Yeah, you are here to see what I am going to put. So, thanks for that. Maratta, I have just said, one of the things that we have to do is 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 that we पश्चिमात्य देशात ली उदाहरण आपने लग पाल लोग कर कर तो आपने पूर्वजन ने दिल्ली का ही उदाहरण बेकी पर एक सांगवस कर दिया कि तुकरा मारा नहीं था क्या कि पैर दधी धूप आनी ना होगी पैर दधी धूप आनी ना होगी मतलब दू तू लोनी ताक तेजी दृश्य जाकर एक कब बने तो सब आज तक एक कब सही पर ना आज ही पाही अलंकार के लिए अपन अगर लेडीज वर्ग में भरपूर है तो ना हाँ कि वो लोग सदैव दस्त समझ ना आए पर ना आज ही पाही अलंकार के लिए कन्या का तो आज ही एक कब बने अपन गोल्ड ऐसा बेसिक जरूरी है तो 
तर त्याचे किती श्रृंगार किती भार होऊ शकतात पण गोल्डला जर आपण बघितलं तर त्याचे जे सिंगल तो एक धातू आहे मृत्यूचे घट दाले नामावर त्या काळामध्ये मातीचे भांडे हा तर एक प्रकार होता त्याच्यामुळे ते असे की मृत्यूचे घट दाले नामावर मृत्यू का अवधे एक आहे तसं जर बघितलं तर ती एक मातीच आहे मग त्याच्यावर तुकाराम पाहाल म्हणता की तुका म्हणजे एक एक ते अनेक अनेकत्व एक एक पण सो बी ह्युमन ऑल टू टुगेदर एकच आहे मग त्या एका माणसामधून एक न्यूटन तयार एक छत्रपती शिवाजी महाराज तयार एक संभाजी महाराज तयार एक संत तुकाराम होता एक विठ्ठलराम विखे होता आणि आपण काय होतो आणि मग आपण माणूस आहे का जगावर आहे त्याचा जेव्हा आपण डिफरेन्शिएट करायला विचार करतो तेव्हा खरे अशा प्रकारचे आजचे विषय आहेत ना ते महत्वाचे ठरतात ह्युमन मॅन त्याच्यामध्ये माणूस इजिकल टू आपण आता मॅनेजमेंट केलं तुम्ही असं ऐकलंय का बघितलंय का की आज कुठं घोड्यांची सभा होते घोड्यांची कॉन्फरन्स आहे घोडे फ्युचरवर विचार करत आहे तेव्हा गाडवांची तरी होते तेव्हा बैलांची तरी होते की आम्हाला एकदम फार होते ब्रिटिशांनी आपल्याला शेकडो वर्ष ठेवलं असं आपण म्हणतो आपण पेटून उठलो असं बैलांनी आतापर्यंत पेटून उठले तर ते फ्रीडम मागणाऱ्या उभ्या सो बेसिक डिफरन्स आहे की इंटरनेट जो आहे तो माणसामध्ये आहे इंटरनेट जर सोडलं तर बाकी सगळं पाहून आहे आणि माणसातला तो जर इंटरनेट काढला तर जनावरामध्ये आणि आपल्यामध्ये काहीही फरक नाही असं शास्त्र सांगतो बेसिकली आपल्याला स्तर आहे त्याच्यामुळे आपल्याला असे म्हणतो आता डॉक्टर आहेत आणि डॉक्टर याच्यामध्ये जास्त मी जात नाही पण बी एम आय इंडेक्स म्हणजे जर काय म्हटलं तर तुम्ही जास्त चांगल्या पद्धतीने सांगू शकता पण आता इथं मॅनेजमेंटचे पण मुलं आहेत तर बी एम आय इंडेक्स हे मॅनेजमेंटच्या दृष्टिकोनातून बॉडी माइंड आणि इंटरनेट अशा इंडेक्स मधून आपण जर बघितलं तर वी हॅव बॉडी अॅनिमल्स आर अॅनिमल तीन गोष्टी मध्ये जर आपण परत एका ह्युमन मॅन मॅन अॅनिमल मध्ये जर बघितलं तर अजून डिफरन्शिएट होईल आपल्याला बॉडी आहे जनावरांना बॉडी असते आपण एक ऑब्जेक्ट आहोत जनावर हा एक ऑब्जेक्ट आहे आपण परसिव्ह करतो तो पण परसिव्ह करतो त्याला एक पर्सनॅलिटी आहे फिजिकल आपल्याला एक पर्सनॅलिटी आहे फिजिकल दोघांमध्ये जर आपण बघितलं तर ऍज अ बॉडी काहीही फरक नाही त्याचं स्ट्रेचर वेगळं आपलं स्ट्रेचर वेगळं त्याला भूक लागते आपल्याला भूक लागते हे त्याच्या लेकरावर प्रेम करत आपण आपल्या लेकरावर त्यानंतर काही हे झालं तर त्याच्याही डोळ्यातून पाणी येतं आपल्याही डोळ्यातून पाणी त्यानंतर काही लागलं तर ते त्याचं औषध नॅचरली शोधण्याचा प्रयत्न करतो किंवा ते पण मृत्यू पावत आपली ही तशीच आहे आपल्याला पाणी प्यायचं असेल तर आपण पाणी पितो त्याला पाणी प्यायचं असेल तर तेही पाणी सो त्याला मन आहे का त्याला माइंड आहे का तर असायला पाहिजे कारण भूक लागली हे लागली हे कळतं त्याला त्याला इमोशन आहेत का ते त्याच्या लेकरावर प्रेम करतो तर त्याला इमोशन पण आहे त्याला फिलिंग्स पण आहे त्याची पण एक मेंटल पर्सनॅलिटी आहे मेंटल पर्सनॅलिटी असल्यामुळं वाघ वाघांच्या काळपात राहतो कुत्रे गल्लीतले कुत्रे एकत्र राहतात बाहेरच्या गल्लीत जर कुत्रा येऊ द्या पण त्याला येऊ पण देत नाही मग बॉडी माइंड आणि परत इतरा इथं तिसरा डिफरन्स येतो की इंटरनेट हा इंटरनेट 
फार जगवान मध्ये आहे आणि तो इंटेलेक्ट आपल्यामध्ये आहे त्याच आज आपण डिस्कशन आर्टिफिशियल वर करत आहोत तर सिंपल आपण निदान सुरुवात इंटेलेक्ट पासून केली तर असे कित्येक आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजन्स चे आपण टप्पे पार करू शकतो पण आपण कोणासाठी करतोय त्याची एक बेसिक सुरुवात आपण केली पाहिजे आपल्याकडे इंटरनेट आहे त्याच्यामुळे आपल्याकडे थॉट्स निर्माण होतात आपल्याकडे थॉट्स निर्माण होतात त्या जनावरांमध्ये थॉट्स निर्माण होत नाही त्याच्यामुळे त्यांच्या बैराची भावना तयार होत नाही त्याचे समजा कधी काळी एखादा चुकून वापरून समजा आमच्या घराला घरच्या एखादा साप मारला त्याची पूर्वी मला पुन्हा दोन तीन वाट टाकून काही आवाज नगरला जाणार आहे आणि काही तो उतरणार आहे म्हणून काय आघात करणार आपण थिंकर आहोत ते थिंकर नाही त्याच्यामुळे त्यांनी त्यांची जनरेशन जसे कुत्रे अठराशे सत्तावन्न मध्ये होते त्याच्यापूर्वी होते तसेच आज जगतात त्यांनी स्वतःसाठी शेल्टर किंवा घर दार मॉडर्नायझेशन डिजिटलायझेशन असं काही केलं नाही बट दे डोंट थिंक ultimately they don't carry the intellectual personality which we carry and it is only the distinct difference between the animal and the man and even has intellectual ability madhun apan jeva newton la hoto tevha tela manus karun bagaycha nisrun gelo tela ek scientist karun bagitla ani tela sodun dile असं आपण छत्रपती शिवाजी महाराजांना माणूस म्हणून बघायचं सोडून दिलं राजा म्हणून एक विशेषण दिलं आणि आपण त्याच्यात ते नाही असं म्हणून स्वतःला वेगळं केलं संभाजी महाराजांना फक्त शिवाजी महाराजांचा मुलगा आणि त्याच्या पुढं मग एन नंबर ऑफ लोकांनी केलेलं एन नंबर ऑफ विश्लेषण त्याच्यापासून राज्यनीती आणि त्याच्यातून कास्ट सिग्नल असं बघितलं आणि कोणी अप्रिशिएट केलं कोणी क्रिटिसाईज केलं कोणी सोडून आता संभाजी महाराज शिवाजी महाराजांनाही महाराज म्हटले आहोत तुकाराम महाराजांना जेव्हा महाराज म्हणतात तेव्हा संत संत म्हणजे वयोवृद्ध लोकांच का असं म्हणून आपण तेही सोडून देतो पण अल्टिमेटली ही माणसं होती त्यांच्या क्वालिटीमुळं त्यांनी हे इंटेलिजन्स तयार केलं कुठेतरी तो ऍपल पडताना त्याला ते गुरु तो आकर्षण ते फॉर्मुले हे त्यांनी जे स्वतःच्या थॉट प्रोसेस वर स्वतःच्या माइंड ने काम केलं त्याच्यामुळे त्याचा तो दुसरा दिवस आला शिवाजी महाराजांनी जे स्वप्न बघितलं ते व्हिज्युअलाइज केलं त्याच्यावर काम केलं म्हणून ते पुढं एक एक इंदवी स्वराज झालं लिडरशिप तयार झाली लिडर म्हणून आपण ते बघतो का एक लिडर म्हणून आपण आपल्यामध्ये न्यूटन बघतो का एक लिडर म्हणून सुनील सुनील मध्ये शिवाजी महाराज बघतो का मला वाटतं विक्टो बायकल ते कोणेच असं जर विचारलं तर बऱ्याच जणांना ते सांगत आहेत की तो एक ऑस्ट्रियन ग्रीक तत्वज्ञ होता अल्टिमेट ह्युमन फ्रीडम ज्याला कळालं आणि विज्ञानाच्या भाषेत लिहिलं त्याला जगात सगळे पुरस्कार मिळाले असा तो विक्टो बायकल त्यांनी एकच सांगितलं की माणसाचं सगळं हे राहून घेतलं जाऊ शकत परंतु त्याचे थॉट प्रोसेस कोणी घेत नाही तो त्याचा जो त्याने जर ठरवलं ते जर करायचं आणि असं विकतो काय तर सगळ्या जगात माहितीये सगळ्या मॅनेजमेंटच्या पुस्तकामध्ये त्याचा गाव बघ आहे आपले पण मॅनेजमेंटचे लोक ते सांगतात ते त्याचं नाव सांगतात पण माझ्यासारख्या महाराष्ट्रातल्या माणसाला त्या उदाहरणाचे त्यांचा जन्म तर एकोणीसशे सहा साली झाला तर संभाजी महाराजांचा जन्म हा त्यांच्या फार शेकडो वर्ष पूर्वी झाला त्यांना जेव्हा मरण यातना झाल्या त्यांना जेव्हा धर्म सोडण्यासाठी लावलं तेव्हा त्यांनी हसत हसत प्रत्येक स्वतःच्या प्रत्येक आपण नकला नकाला लागलं तर त्रासच राहतो त्यांचे जी त्यांचे डोळे त्यांची त्वचा त्यांच्या सगळ्या मरण यातना ह्या त्यांनी कोणत्या आनंदाला झेलल्या असतील That is ultimate स्वतःवर घेतलेला विजय इरेस्पेक्टिव्ह ऑफ दी पेन्स तो आपण संभाजी महाराज तिथं ग्लोरीफाय का करत नाही आणि आपल्याला विक्टो बँकरच कसा दिसतो आपल्याला शिवाजी महाराज लिडर म्हणून कसे दिसत नाही पण ते 
अमेरिका कुणी एक्सप्लोर केली हे सगळ्यांनाच माहिती बिकॉज आपण इंटेलेक्ट हळूहळू विसरत चाललो आहोत आपण माणसाच्या ज्या बेसिक क्वालिटी आहेत त्याच्यावर आपण कुठेतरी कमी पडत आहोत इवन संत तुकाराम महाराज म्हणजे की मी जेव्हा तुमचे अभंग वाचतो तेव्हा आपल्याकडेच आता तुमचं नगर जिल्हा आहे आपण त्याला पश्चिम महाराष्ट्र म्हणतो आणि महाराष्ट्राच्या प्रदेशातून बीड जिल्हा केस तालुका आठच या गावातून आल्यावर असं दिसतं की जिथं ज्ञानेश्वर महाराज ज्यांनी तत्वज्ञानाच्या सगळ्या बेसिक गोष्टी क्लिअर केल्या आणि तुकार महाराजांनी त्याच्यावर कळच लावला की हाऊ कॅन यू बी अ सायंटिफिक थॉट प्रोसेस तुम्ही दैववादाबद्दल तुम्ही स्वतःच्या कॉन्ट्रीब्युशन करून कसं पुढे जाऊ शकता तर ह्या गोष्टीवर मला वाटतं कुठेतरी रिव्हिजिट जर झालं तर आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजन्स नावाच्या जे आपण बर्डन आणि प्रेशर असं जे फील करतो त्याला आपण खूप एक्सप्लोअर करू शकतो आणि कुठेतरी पुढच्या लेवलला आपण त्याचा एक विचार केला पाहिजे पर्टिक्युलरली आपण जर बघितलं की ए आय इज द नेक्स्ट व्हर्जन ऑफ म्हणजे पहिले डेटा सायन्स आहे काहीतरी येत मग त्याच्यामध्ये डीप लर्निंग आहे त्याच्यामध्ये त्याच्यानंतर मग आपण मशीन लर्निंग आहे समजा आमच्या इथं आम्ही एक्सपोर्टचे समजा जर बघितले काही कॉम्पोनंट येतो आपल्या इथं कॉम्पोनंट समजा पन्नास मायक्रॉन मध्ये चालतात त्यांना दहाच मायक्रॉन लागतात मग आम्ही त्या ऑटो ऑक्सेटच्या मशीन टाकलेल्या आहेत की तो लगेच ऑक्सेट करती मशीन आणि ती अॅक्युरेसी गॅदर करते तर त्याला माणसाची काही गरज नाही प्रत्येक वेळेस ते मंदिर लावा गेज लावा चेक करा तर मशीन करायला करते त्याच्यानंतर मग तुमचे ऑटो ड्राईव्ह आहे ते रियाय मध्ये येतात हे सगळं होऊ शकतं पण बेसिकली त्या माणसाला करू शकतो की ज्यांनी संभाजी महाराज तत्वज्ञ का करायचं सांगतो न्यूटन आणि स्वतःवर काम केला का जगावर काम केला जर त्यांनी सरळ नाही सांगितलं होतं की एवढं येतं आपलं कसं झालं की आपण ही इन्स्टिट्यूट काय कामाची हे पुढे तर आपण बनले आणि ह्या सांगणारा काय सांगून गेला सो वी टॉक अबाउट वर्ल्ड इन अ डीप वे आपण जगासाठी जन्म घालवतो पण आपल्यासाठी कधीच वेळ देत नाही तर तुकाराम महाराज म्हणत बाबाने होय मनाशी संवाद आपलाची वाद आपणच We don't do debate with our own. We don't do dialogue with our own. आपण आपल्यासाठी काहीच करत नाही म्हणजे आपण आपल्या बाह्य स्वरूपासाठी शंभर टक्के करतो आपण आपल्या अंतर स्वरूपाविषयी काय काम करतो आपण आपल्या कॅपॅबिलिटीवर काय काम करतो आपण आपल्याला किती क्रिटिसाइज करतो म्हणजे सुनील म्हणतो का बाबा ते तुला आज बोलता पण नाही आपण म्हणतो नाही नाही तिथं काय करतो माझा विषय वेगळा होता त्यांचा विषय वेगळा मग आपण परत वेगळं उत्तर देतो नाही मग तू एक्सपोर्ट करतो का नाही नाही जर्मनीला होऊ शकतं चायनाला तू आवडते सो वी क्रिटिसाइज आदर अँड वी जस्टिफाय आवर ओन सेल्फ पण आपण ती जर जर्नी तुका मध्ये होऊया मनाशी संवाद आपल्याची वाद आपण आपण आपल्याशी डायलॉग करायला चालू केला पाहिजे आपण आपल्याला क्रिटिसाइज करायला पाहिजे मग काय होतं की मग तुम्ही येतात म्हणता नाही तुमची कंपनी खूप छान आहे तुमचं प्रॉडक्ट खूप छान आहे तुम्ही असं चांगलं काम करता मला कळायला पाहिजे की नाही माझं कुठंतरी चुकतंय बरं का आणि ह्याच्यापेक्षा चांगलं होऊ शकतं बरं का तिथं होऊ शकतं आणि ते माझं कम्पॅरेटिव्ह असलं पाहिजे परत तुम्ही दुसऱ्या वर्षी म्हणता की अरे मागच्या वर्षीपेक्षा तर तुम्ही अजून खूप छान आपल्याला परत वाटतं की आपलं काहीतरी चुकतंय बरं का आपण अजून काहीतरी करू शकतो बरं का आणि देन युअर जर्नी स्टार्ट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ग्रोथ फॉर्च्युनेटली दिस वेस्टर्न पीपल टू दॅट जर्नी ऑफ ग्रोथ आणि वी आर बी ओनली इन द पॉलिटिक्स पॉलिटिशियन कोण काय करतो कोण काय हे करत याच्यामध्येच गेलो तो त्याचा करतो भोगतो पुढे जातो आणि आपण काहीच करत त्याच्यामुळे माहिती बी दिस शुड बी द कॉन्फरन्स फॉर द स्टुडंट्स अँड ऑल इन्क्लुडिंग मी की आपण आपल्याशी संवाद केला पाहिजे आता सिंपल एक्झाम्पल आहे की वी हॅव अ इंटरनेट दॅट द रिझन वी वर ऑन अवर पॉड आपण कुत्र्याला प्रशिक्षण देऊ शकतो आपणच देतो आपण घोड्याला प्रशिक्षण देतो आपण गाड्याला पण प्रशिक्षण देतो आपण बैलाला पण प्रशिक्षण देतो आपण वाघाला पण प्रशिक्षण 
आपल्यामध्ये एकत्रात मिळते त्याच्याशिवाय तो लढाईचा घोडा तयार नाही होत किंवा मग त्याच्याशिवाय तो इव्हन पी एम पासून सी एम पर्यंतच्या स्पॉट मधला तो कुत्रा पण तयार होत नाही कुत्रा हा कुत्र्याच्या प्रशिक्षणाची जबाबदारी घेत नाही घोडा हा घोड्याच्या प्रशिक्षणाची जबाबदारी घेत नाही गाढव हा गाढवाच्या तमातीची जबाबदारी घेत नाही बैल हा त्याच्या जनरेशनला असं काम शेतात करावं लागत ती जबाबदारी घेत नाही वी बिकॉज ऑफ इंटरनेट आपण त्यांच्या वाढीवर कंट्रोल करतो आपण त्यांच्या वाढीवर काम करतो and we change the shape of the all animals but are we really working on our own body are we dreaming to become a six pack but ya apela board nahi ta mala tel nahi sakar nahi sakali evda tension asta management cha ki kacha ta kay students la pan asta sakali uthna pan nahi ho sakali uthla ta dhavna pan nahi बाकी आरशामध्ये कॉस्मेटिक न खूप बघू पण कॉस्मेटिक लावू नये इतकं सुंदर आपण आपल्याला कधी बघू शकतो का आपण जनावरांना प्रशिक्षित करतोय आपल्याला कोण प्रशिक्षित करणार जनावर पुढे जात आहे पण आपण आपल्यासाठी आपल्या इंटरनेट आपल्या बॉडीतून काय काम करतोय इट इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट फ्रॉम दी स्मॉल चाईल्डहूड कारण पहिले काही वर्ष हे फक्त बॉडीवर काम होतो म्हणजे तुम्ही तुमच्या सवयी तुमचे आहार तुमचे विहार तुमची आप्रेली तुमची नर्चरी सांगतो की लहानपणी काही असो नसो आपल्याला पाठ करता काय वेग वेग तुमच्या कशासाठी वापरते का वापरते माहिती नाही दहावी पर्यंत तेच केलं म्हणजे दहावीला बापाला वाटायचं संस्कृत मध्ये याला टाकावं जेणेकरून गरीब मध्ये पण त्या सुभाषित असं काही असंच करायचं नाही ते पाठ करायचे लिहायचे पाठ करायचे लिहायचे शंभर मार्क मिळाले जगली पण ही फेज त्यांनी कुठंतरी लावली म्हणून बॉडी नर्सर झाली आणि मग त्या शिकलेल्या बॉडीमध्ये कुठंतरी संस्कृत कुठंतरी विज्ञान कुठंतरी ज्ञान कुठंतरी मित्र त्याच्यामधून त्याच्यातून एक माइंड तयार होतो एक मन तयार होत प्रशिक्षित मन तयार होत जनवराचं होत माणसाचं होत आणि ते माणसाचं माइंड हळूहळू थोडंफार काम करायला लागत त्याला बॉडी साथ देते कारण ती प्रशिक्षित झालेली असते अदरवाईज तुम्ही जर एखाद्याला सांगा की दहा किलोमीटर पळ ते दहा मीटर वरच घाबरणार एखाद्याला म्हटलं की चार मला आज फरक चांगलं वाटत की मला असं विशेष काही वाटत नाही लग्न सकाळी लवकर येणार पण ते चार पाच वर्ष पूर्वी फार विचित्र वाटायचं सकाळी खूप म्हटलं पाच ला झाला म्हटलं काहीच वाटत नाही साडेचार ला म्हटलं तरी काही वाटत नाही प्रशिक्षित आहे ते काही त्या दिवसाच ऍक्टिव्हिटी नाही त्यामुळं माइंड त्याला मारक नाही होत बाधक नाही होत प्रेरक होत सो वन्स यू स्टार्ट वर्किंग ऑन युअर फिजिकल बॉडी your mind start getting percolating a positive response mujhe aapla man kasa asava yala par videshi input chi garaj nahi aapla kad self input hai aapla maharashtra cha tumcha region cha ki tyacha var maharashtra par sangta ki man karare prasan your mind should be very positive it should be happy mind मन करारे प्रसन्न सर्व सिद्धीचे कारण वाटे वरी मॉन यू कॅन गेट काय तुम्हाला पाहिजे रिसर्चर बनायचंय पी एच डी बनायचंय प्रोफेसर बनायचंय डायरेक्टर बनायचंय प्रधानमंत्री बनायचंय सर्व सिद्धीचे कारण मोक्ष अथवा बंधन सुख समाधान आणि उत्साह कारण आपण असं जर हे केलं इमॅजिनेशन केलं तर आपण काहीतरी पुढच्या ऍक्टिव्हिटी करतो तसं मने प्रतिमा स्थापित मला एंटरटेनर व्हायचंय मने प्रतिमा स्थापित मने मना पूजा केली मी माझीच पूजा केली माझ्याच मनाची केली माझंच नर्चरिंग केलं मला एंटरटेनर व्हायचंय मीही काम करायचंय मने इच्छा पुरवली 
त्याच्यासाठी भाला एंटरप्रेनर होण्यासाठी काम करण्यासाठी मी आता सगळ्या एक सापड होते मन माऊली सकाळची हे माझं मनच सर्व काही आहे मग त्याला एक्सटर्नल कशाचीही गरज नाही मन गुरु आणि शिष्य करी आपले जी दास प्रसन्न आप आपण आस सुख समाधान हिंसा त्याच्यामुळे यु मे बी एनी वन यु मे बी प्राईम मिनिस्टर यु मे बी अर एम पी यु मे बी अ डायरेक्टर यु मे बी अ लेक्चर यु मे बी अ स्टुडंट यु मे बी एनी वन लाईक बी एक्सटर्नल पर्सन लाईक मी की त्याच्यात महाराष्ट्रात साधक वाचक पंडित श्रोते वक्ते ऐका मात नाही नाही आणि दैवत दुकामध्ये सो व्हॉट इज दिस माइंड तर तुम्ही जे काही नर्चरिंग तुमच्या सकाळपासून संध्याकाळपर्यंत करता तेच सगळं पण आपण काहीतरी गुरुवार आला की वेगळी पूजा करतो शनिवार आला की वेगळी पूजा करतो श्रावण आला की वेगळी पूजा करतो आणि श्रावण संपल्या संपल्या वेगळी पूजा करतो श्रावणाच्या पहिल्याच दिवशी फार वेगळी पूजा करतो सो आर वी अलाइन आर वी अलाइन इट इज समथिंग डिफरंट वी शुड बी अलाइन इफ यू आर अलाइन बाय अवर बॉडी इफ यू आर अलाइन बाय अवर माइंड देन अल्टिमेटली इट कम्स टू द इंटरनेट and intellect support is only the instruments of the body and positivity of the mind i hope this intelligent dialogue by the external people should lead to the future so many ai professional that we can go to the next level and we can lead the world jab hum lead the world manto tab काही माझ्या माझ्यातले मी मी काय आहे कोण आहे मी काय जास्त काही सांगितलं नाही मी काय नाही पण एवढ्या मोठ्या इन्स्टिट्यूट मध्ये येऊन मी काय केले हे सांगण्यापेक्षा आय एम हॅपी मॅन मी दोन वर्षापूर्वी तीन वर्षापूर्वी असं मी नवीन घर बांधलं तेव्हा आई वडील गावाकडे गेले महालक्ष्मीसाठी मग आईला करोना झाला त्या काळी फार दोन वर्ष खूप फार सिरियस मॅटर होत नाही मग तोच वडिलांना झाला तोच बायकोला झाला आणि मग उरले तीन ठिकाणा झाल्यानंतर की पोरगा दोन पोरांनी ती म्हणतात राव हे तर अवघड आहे म्हणजे आणि माझे मित्र म्हणायचे आपण कामात हुशार असतो आणि तुला जर काही झालं तर किती प्रॉब्लेम असतो मग मी तिथं सुरू केला की दुकामध्ये होय मनाशी समाज आपल्याशी वाद असते मग मी पोरं माझे नव्वद किलोच आहे पंच्याण्णव किलोच आहे घरी गेली आणि बायको तर काही ऐकतच नाही आपण आणि आपण दिवस रात्र तत्व घ्या शिकवतो मी म्हटलं की आपण जर आपल्या हेल्थवर काम आणि मग मी माझा ह्या हाताला थोडा प्रॉब्लेम आहे तर मी प्लेट जरी घेते तरी तो खरतर खरतर कापायचा दॅट बिकम्स अ इन्स्पिरेशन खरतरी जरा काढू नये मग मी जिम तयार केला आपण काय करतो म्हणजे आज मला ते पडले की घरामध्ये तुमच्या गेस्ट रूम नसतो घरामध्ये तुमच्या एखादी एक्स्ट्रा रूम नसतो तर तुम्ही जिम रूम आहे आणि मी सगळ्यात पहिले जेम सुसज्ज असं जेम केलं एक ट्रेनर लावला म्हणजे कसं आहे की वरून खाली आलं की जेम चालू होत आपण बाहेर म्हटलं की दोन तीन दिवस पण ट्राउझर घेतो गाडी हे ते आणि ते लोकांना दाखवण्यासाठी करतो आणि व्हॉट्सअप वर ह्याच्यावर स्टेटस वर फोटो टाकतो पाचव्या दिवशी परत घरी बसतो तर तसं ना करता ट्रेनर घरी लावला तो घरी आला तो यायचा वरून मला दावा लागायचा असं एक पाच सहा महिन्याचं गर्दी सुरू झालं मग मी आलाही झालो पहिले सहाला यायला त्रास व्हायचा नंतर साडेपाचला झाला मग आता मग कुठंतरी चार तीसला मी चांगल्या पद्धतीने रिसेट झाला वर्षभर हे सगळं केल्यानंतर पार्क पूर्ण बघायला चालू केलं की बाप सकाळी उठत आहे का नाही करतय काय पुस्तक बघायचं मी काही त्याला सांगितलं नाही मी तेव्हापासून प्रश्न करायचे सोडून दिले आणि आपण फक्त बेस्ट प्रॅक्टिसेस करायचे आपल्या मेसेज मधून काही होऊ शकतं का हे अभ्यास करायला चालतो मग बारक्या पोराला कुठंतरी व्यायाम करा वाटायला लागला त्यांनी मग एक दिवस आला पंधरा दिवस सोडून दिला एक दिवस आला पंधरा दिवस त्याची ते तो धनुका नको धनुका नको असं सुरू झालं बाप नंतर एकदा आल्यानंतर मग नाही सोडत अशा ते जाऊन त्यानं बरंच काही बघितलं मग त्यांनी पिझा खायचं सोडून दिलं मग त्यांनी बर्गर खायचं जरा कमी केलं आणि ते खाण्यातून कमी करण्याचा प्रयत्न केला पण तो व्यायामाला काही येत नव्हता पण त्याला व्यायाम परत रिव्हिजन करायला जरूर मला कारण की 
मी तसा मार्केटिंग मध्ये चांगला होतो ते पोस्टर ते ते सगळं दाखवायचं त्यांना की बाबा ते क्वार्टर मग ते आपलं ट्रान्सफर हे ते सगळं आणि तो फील फ्रेश चा मी सेम द्यायचा माझ्या पुरता मग कुठेतरी सव्वा वर्षानंतर तो बारका पोरडा जॉईन झाला आमचा आणि तो माझ्या पहिले पंधरा मिनिट अशा पद्धतीनं आमची सर्व्हिस होती मोठं पूर्व काही त्याला ऍक्सेप्ट नव्हतं म्हणजे पप्पा ह्या वयात म्हणजे नसतो हाईट कमी होत असते हाईट वाढायला पाहिजे मग तुम्ही तुमची आता हाईट झालेली ते येणं आहे ते काय त्याला समजत नाही त्याला मी सांगितलं नको तू तर त्यांनी त्याचा त्याचा प्रभाव करायला मोठा असल्यामुळे चालू केला आणि त्याला त्याचा प्रभाव द्या परत आपण काय पॉझिटिव्ह नाही पण जेव्हा बारक पूर्वामध्ये फिजिकल चेंजेस दिसायला लागले तेव्हा मोठं पूर्व आता आता माझं वय झालं का मी करतो आणि ते स्टार्टेड आणि आता तो सगळ्यात पुढतो बायको म्हणते की मी पण करायला पाहिजे आणि ती मग तिने दोन चार लेडीज गोळा केल्या आणि ती पण आता जी म्हणते सो आपण वातावरण काय तयार करतो आपण मेसेज आपल्या कॉन्ट्रीब्युशन मधून काय करतो आपण बिहेव्हिअर काय करतो ही जे संस्कृती आपल्या घरामध्ये आपल्या ऑर्गनायझेशन मध्ये आपल्या इन्स्टिट्यूट मध्ये आपल्या थॉट प्रोसेस मध्ये जेव्हा हळूहळू आपण स्ट्रेंथन करतो तेव्हा कुठेतरी त्याच्यातून आपलं बेनिफिट नाही होत एक इकोसिस्टम तयार पॉझिटिव्हिटीचे दहा लोक एकत्र येतात पॉझिटिव्ह गोष्टी बोलतात त्याच्यातले नऊ पेज जातात एक पुढे जाते दुसऱ्या दिवशीची एक पुढे जाते एंड ऑफ दी मन तुमच्याकडे एक फिल्टर पाचशे पंचवीस आयडिया येतात त्या नेक्स्ट लेवलच्या असतात त्या एक्सपेरिमेंट होतात त्या पुढच्या ती माहीत परत नेक्स्ट लेवलला जातात आपण आनंदित होत जातो मोटिवेटेड होत जातो अपग्रेड होत जातो आपले चॅलेंजेस आपण डिफाईन करतो आणि कुठंतरी मग अशा ह्याच्यातून आपण जे रेफरन्सेस देतो की जापान जर्मनी त्या केसेस तयार होतात अनफॉर्च्युनेटली आपल्याकडे कसं आहे जेव्हा विद्यार्थी कॉलेज मध्ये असतात तेव्हा त्यांना काही कळत नाही मलाही कळत नव्हतं तसं तुम्हालाही कळत नाही आणि काही कळूनही घ्यायचं नसतं आणि तो फर्स्ट इयरच्या दिवाळीत कुठं जातो मामाकडे जातो उन्हाळ्यात कुठं जातो माहिती नाही परत दुसऱ्या वर्षी कुठं जातो माहिती नाही तिसऱ्या वर्षी कुठं जातो माहिती नाही इंडस्ट्री मध्ये जा म्हणलं तर मग काही हुशार मुलं किंवा सर्वच हुशार मुलं किंवा बरेच काही हुशार मुलं सिनियर्सचे झालेल्या मित्रांचे रिपोर्ट घेतात त्याच्यावरचे दोन तीन पानं बदलतात त्याच्यातल्या ग्रामॅटिकल चेंजेस करतात त्याच्यात आपण दिल्यासारखं दाखवतात ते कॉलेजला सबमिट करतात पण त्यांचे दोन वेळे फार महत्वाचे असतात पण ते इंडस्ट्रीमध्ये गेले की म्हणतात प्रॅक्टिस किती समजणार त्यांच्यातला स्टुडंट गेलेला असतो त्याच्यातला प्रोफेशनल जागा होतो लगेच तो म्हणतो प्रॅक्टिस किती देणार तिथं वीस तर देणार पंचवीस तर देणार अरे आय टी चे सत्तरचे देतात म्हणजे वी आर नॉट बी इन्फ्लुएन्स बाय अवर ओन थॉट प्रोसेस वी स्टार्ट अवर जर्नी बाय एक्सटर्नल टेम्पटेशन अँड मोटिवेशन विच इज ओनली मनी आणि मग कुठेतरी तो संवाद होऊन कुठे जातो कोणी फ्रस्ट्रेशनला जातो कोणी समाजाला स्वीकार देतं कोणी पॉलिटिशियनला निश्चमान देतं कोणी पॉलिसीला विषय हे करतं कोणी महाराष्ट्राला कोणतं कोणी विदर्भाला म्हणतं किंवा कोणी बिहारला वाईट म्हणतं बट वेट म्हणतो पण खरंच तुम्हाला एंटरप्रेन्युअर व्हायचं असेल ना दिज आर ओनली द कॅटलिस्ट खरंच जर तुम्हाला ए आय मधून पुढे जायचं असेल ना तर हीच विषयांतर तुमच्यासाठी एक टॉनिक आहे तर तुम्हाला असं काही वाटतात एकदम म्हणजे इन्स्टिट्यूट मध्ये राहून असं म्हणून नाही तुम्हाला असं वाटतं का की कोणतंच गव्हर्नमेंट हे गव्हर्नमेंट नाही म्हणते कोणतंच गव्हर्नमेंटला वाटतं की उद्योजक पुढे जा भाषणासाठी मी पुढे जावं खरंच पुढे जावं नाही जावं तर वाटत असेल तर मग मागच्या वीस आता बघत होतो की मी साखरला मागच्या वीस वर्षापासून रेंटेड आहे माझे एम्प्लॉयमेंट शंभरची झालेली तिथे माझ्या औरंगाबाद मध्ये पाचशे एम्प्लॉयमेंट झाले माझ्याकडे कधी एम आय डी सी नाही आली तुला जागा पाहिजे का माझे मी कट नंबर मध्ये जातो लिगल बांधकाम करतो पण इन्कम टॅक्स मला पंधरा तारखेला भरला नाही तर सोळा तारखेला इन्कम टॅक्स येत मागच्या वर्षी तुम्ही फर्स्ट ह्याच्यामध्ये ऐंशी लाख भरले होते आणि सहा महिन्याला तुम्ही 
एक कोटी पन्ना लाख भर लेते ये तो तुम्हें एक कोटी भर पन्ना लाख जाना पाजे Thank you very much, sir, for your thoughtful and provoking speech. Uh, sir, we are really enlightened. Books of the Marathi Vashi was the Santa Sahitya was the one where the Prabhu was. Intelligence, artificial intelligence, the Santa Sahitya. नजर को बदलो तो नजारे बदल जाते हैं नजर को बदलो तो नजारे बदल जाते हैं सोच को बदलो तो सितारे बदल जाते हैं सोच को बदलो तो सितारे बदल जाते हैं किश्तियां बदलने से कुछ नहीं होता यारो किश्तियां बदलने से कुछ नहीं होता यारो दिशाओं को बदलो तो किनारे खुद बखुद सामने आ जाते हैं किनारे खुद बखुद सामने आ जाते here after I request publication of compendium for our conference. Yes. I request one minute dignitary, so just a minute we'll have. Yes. 
Now I'll call the winner of the conference, Dr. Riti Panchal Ma, to kindly propose a of thanks. Very good afternoon. One and all present over there on behalf of Dr. Kishore Sanjana of the Partners Foundation, Institute of Business Management and Rural Development. I, Dr. Riti Sanjana, would like to propose a vote of thanks on the occasion of Act of Inaugural Promotion for the International Conference on Recent Trends in Artificial Intelligence and Data Science. This inaugural ceremony of International Conference is privileged by our chief guest. Today's uh, function, Mr. Sunil Kirdak, sir, Managing Director, Kirdak Autocom Private Limited, Aurora. I would like to thank Mr. Sunil, sir, for sparing his valuable time and would like to say that your experience and words of wisdom are just like a golden path for students and faculty members. I'm thankful both the international subject experts. Mr. Alan Sandro from the Netherlands and Mr. Ian from UK who joined us online and expressed their expert views. It's our immense pleasure to thank Honorable Shri Radha Krishna Vikki Patil, sir, Cabinet Ministry, Governor, Government of Maharashtra, Chairman and Trustee Dr. Vithala Vikki Patil Foundation, and Honorable Dr. Sujay Vikki Patil, sir, Member of Parliament, Ahmedabad, Lok Sabha Constituency. CEO of the Party Foundation. I would like to thank our esteemed chairman of today's conference, Dr. T. N. Blackford, sir, Secretary General, Director Technical, Dr. Vitthal of the Party Foundation, guest of honor, Dr. Abhijit Tinkhe, sir, Deputy Director, Medical College and Hospital, Vicky Party Foundation, for raising the occasion. Also, I'd like to thank Mr. Chandrakan Jeevli, sir. Director Toshiba Stuck Solar Private Limited and Sigra Power System Private Limited, our cover from attending this function and raising the occasion. I also like all the participants and head of the institutes from the foundation. Special thanks to our honorable director, Dr. Sanjay, Sanjay Karnati Rai, sir, for his continuous support and guidance for the execution of this international conference. I am thankful to all the participants for showing that interest in our conference. Last but not the least, my back for the team IDMRD and students for their great support. Here, we are end of the inaugural function and the next events going to be scheduled today are planning session followed by lunch break, panel discussion and technical session in parallel mode. All the experts and participants are requested to be part of the whole conference. Thank you so much. Thanks again. Now we'll proceed for lunch break, and later on we'll have a plenary session. Thank you.